Means you need to put away your phones. Please. Okay. Okay, as part of our leadership and character development program uh, today, we, we, have a, uh, we have a guest speaker, and uh, that is Lieutenant Colonel Kurt Bruder, PhD, University of Texas at Austin in communications, and he has a master's in education from Texas Tech University in counselor education. He is a communications school, school teacher, trained psychotherapist, and a student of spiritual development. He joined the NIMI faculty in the fall of 2021. Bruder has trained professional, professional, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Bruder has trained professionals in skill areas like public speaking, interpersonal and intercultural communications, media writing, and persuasion. He has extensive cross-cultural communication experience gained during his Fulbright Scholar Award appointment in Estonia, Estonia, and if you're not familiar with that, that is one of the highest academic honors uh, you can you can receive. And numerous faculty appointments abroad in Singapore, Malaysia, China, Saudi Arabia, and in and enhanced by his specialized TESOL, or basically English as a second language training around the world. In his scholarly work. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Bruder investigates how our participation and interaction with others gives shape to our sense of self. He has author authored several publications in both the scholarly and popular press, including a guide to devotional chanting, following sound into silence, chanting your way beyond ego and bliss is the title. He is also a recording artist whose several albums featured sacred music spanning the Hindu, Buddhist, Sikh, Sufi, Muslim, and Christian musical and religious worlds. He's also an award-winning graphic artist. Colonel Bruder takes delight in applying his artistic skills and sensibilities in everything he does. Whether as a scholar, writer, illustrator, musician, craftsman, or cook. So pretty very accomplished and talented person. We're glad to have him here. We're glad to have him as part of our staff here and on, on our on faculty at the Institute. So. At this time, I would like to go ahead and introduce um, Dr. Bruder, one second. This is the wrong slides. <laughs> Modern problems. <laughs> there we go. Good morning. There we go. What I was just doing was playing something called a Tibetan singing bowl. And it's among the clearest examples I know of, of a very pure sound. And it makes use of the fact that sound is propagated through air in the form of vibrations, which occur according to a particular frequency. And the pitch is a measurable frequency. The air 
composed of molecules, is set off in a chain reaction of vibration that goes out from its point of origin in all directions and finally reaches your ear. And we, we see that the way that that works is the eardrum vibrates in sympathetic resonance with, or at the same frequency as, the vibrations of the molecules that hit it. Now that's basic hearing. That's the fundamentals of how hearing works as a sense. We're going to talk today about listening, which includes hearing, but has a value-added component. What, what is it that gets added to hearing to make listening? Somebody. What? Okay, somebody. Attention. Attention and care. To be focused, to be concentrated on the one hand, and to, to treat the person with whom you are, or to whom you are listening, with care. Like, I care what you have to say. Everybody get me? So, hearing is important, it's wonderful, but it's incomplete without that value-added element of attention and care. So, I want to talk with you today about certain possibilities that listening uniquely makes available to us as human beings to the degree that we can experience it. And those three things are self-esteem, connection, and creativity. We'll deal with each of these in turn. Self-esteem. This has to do with how we see ourselves, and when we have a good feeling about ourselves, we regard that as esteeming ourselves, regarding ourselves favorably or positively. When I am being listened to, it's easy for me to recognize my own value because someone else is displaying that I have value by listening to me. You get it? When you act like what somebody else says matters, it's a fairly simple step to conclude, oh, I matter. They're listening to me. We have an urgent need to be listened to because we have a fundamental urge to matter, to make a difference, to have it be the case that we are seen and valued. So when it's happening, it's a, it's a fairly simple thing for us to hold ourselves in that kind of positive esteem. When we're not being listened to, it it's very corrosive, it erodes our self-esteem, it makes us doubt our value, because we are each other's mirrors. We show each other how much we matter on an individual basis, on a group basis, indeed in wider constellations of human relationship as well. We urgently want to matter, and listening is the surest proof that we can get from anybody else that we matter. Because what we say matters, it validates us as persons. Is this making sense? So I like this quote very much. Being listened to means we're taken seriously. Our ideas and feelings are known, and ultimately, what we have to say matters. And if what we say matters, if what I'm trying to express matters to somebody else and they're showing me that, it's a fairly easy leap for me to conclude that I matter to them. Second, connection. We're always already connected in the sense that we have an influence on each other, we impact each other's lives. That's pretty clear. 
but to optimize those connections, to make the most of those interactions and the relationships that they support, we have to listen to each other. When that listening happens, our felt sense of connection comes to the fore. It, it's optimized. So here's something to try out. It's sometimes the case, especially with people who are well known to us, that we feel like we know their whole shtick. Uh, you've memorized their script. You know, grandma calls up and you say, yes, grandma, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, you're scrolling on your smartphone, right? Or any of 10,000 other examples that might have occurred in your life where it feels to you like, I already know everything they're going to say. They've got nothing, they've got no new material. So I, I sort of give them half of my hearing and none of my listening. Here's a recommendation. Try acting like you care. Try acting in a manner consistent with what we would call listening. That is, give the fullness of your attention to this person. Act like they matter. It may at first feel a bit awkward, maybe a little insincere, but try it. Watch what happens. Because when I feel like I'm being listened to, like you're listening to me now, it's very supportive. It's nourishing on a soul level. It makes me feel like what I'm doing matters. And so it confirms me in a condition of not just uh, satisfaction, but I'm much more likely to say more and higher quality things that actually are easier on the ear. That is to say, where other people might have had less interest in what I had to say, the quality of their listening calls from me a, a manner of expression that's actually higher quality. Am I making sense? So it's not just the fact that we're that our listening just has to do with adjusting our perspective, as we'll see in a little bit. There's something that's really quite profound and powerful that could be going on. We'll get to that in a moment. If you've taken a psychology class, you've probably heard about the so-called norm of reciprocity. That means you give what you get and you get what you give. People tend to operate on the basis of a simple e economic formula uh, of, well, we, we tend to engage in a kind of healthy exchange. A fair exchange is no robbery, as the adage goes. And so people tend to match each other. And this goes for listening as well. When you listen to somebody, in their next turn at listening, they're likely to extend the same courtesy just on the basis of this simple give-and-take formula. But the consequences of that exchange being matching is that if you make a first move of listening, what's going to happen if they respond in kind? What's likely to occur? Somebody. They'll listen more profoundly to you in consequence. You mustn't be so shy when somebody asks you for input. People tend to reciprocate or give back the quality of the listening that they receive. And because that's predictably the case, if you make the first move or operate out of a commitment to bringing good listening practices to your every encounter, it's likely to impact the whole exchange and up-level your partner's contribution of listening, too. Finally, creativity. We have a deeply felt need to create. It's kind of a corollary of we need to know that we matter. And because it's related, when we know that we are the conduit, the channel through which something new is showing up, a solution to a problem, a creative idea, a bit of art, 
a piece of music, anything that we bring into the world, that the response that we ourselves have to it and that other people have to it is extraordinarily nourishing to our interior. It's like self-evidently good. It's rewarding. Collaborative self-expression is the wellspring of creativity. I can do a lot of creative, th creative things on my own. But when I combine my powers with someone else in terms of coming up with good ideas, introducing something beautiful into the world, brainstorming solutions to a difficult challenge, something quite unexpected occurs. It's not simply the addition of one person's talents and intelligence and abilities with another person's. One plus one equals two. Something extraordinary happens. It's like one combines with one and produces, I don't know, 843. It's like utterly unexpected. It's exponentially greater. It goes way, way beyond what we ordinarily imagine is possible. And some of you have had experience like this, where you get together, you're playing a uh, sport, you're writing a presentation, you're brainstorming a solution to a problem, and there's like, this, these sparks are flying. This energy is being exchanged, and it, you're stimulating each other's capacity to come up with good ideas, etc. And this is something that's called in the research literature, especially on group communication, positive synergy. Synergy comes from a couple of Greek words. Together, they mean to combine the energies. So when that positive synergy is happening, something very much greater becomes a potential that can be realized than just the additive effect of one person's talents and so forth being combined with that of another. Does this make sense? When we're really listened to, we can focus and invent at a much greater level. Okay, in demonstration of some of these ideas, we're going to do an exercise, which is why you were paired up with each other. In the exercise, let me walk you through it, you're going to come up, each of you, with some topic that you can share in about a minute's time. Something that's important to you, it shouldn't be personally private, something that you don't want to share. I'm not asking that of you. But come up right now with something that you're willing to talk about that matters. Something you're hoping for, something that you wish hadn't happened, something that uh, you're excited about or bothered by, whatever. You're going to talk about this thing for a minute. And in the first of two conditions, the person who is in the role of listener will be distracted. They will perform neglect. Don't get up and leave. Don't start jabbering away. You're still present. You're still sort of oriented to the conversation you're having with your partner. But you're displaying neglect. Uh, distraction, you're ignoring them, you're interested in the number of hairs on the back of your hand, whatever. You get me? Then I'm going to have you switch and then person two, you decide who's one and two, person two will say their thing for about a minute and person one will demonstrate neglect. Non-listening. Are we clear? Okay, then we're going to go into condition two. In condition two, each person will, again, say the exact same thing, deliver the same message, but this time their partner will listen to them as profoundly as they can. Do your very best to listen closely, attentively, supportively. Now, it's going to get loud in here, so keep your voices moderate, but be heard by each other in both conditions. Does anybody have any questions about what I'm asking for? Does everybody have a topic? Then please begin.
Okay, switch. Person two, now you talk, and person one, you non-listen. Okay, pause, chill, take a breath. Okay, now we're going to go into condition two. Person one, tell the same thing. Person, person one, you, you talk, same topic. Person two, listen as profoundly as you're capable of. Give them maximum attention and care. And then I'll switch you when we get a minute in. Please begin. All right, sorry to have to stop you. Person two, now you say your thing. Person one, listen as intently as you can. Please, begin. Okay, your attention now, please. 
Sorry to stop you because some of you look like you're actually having a good conversation. So I'd like you to reflect on your experience there. Think about physical sensation that's, that came up in the different conditions. Think about memories that came up, past experiences that you flashed on. Think about your ability to concentrate in the two different conditions. Your ability to, to have something to say. Any reactions? Anything that you notice, please. Just raise your hand. Yes? You have no words when they're not listening to you. That's as succinct a statement as I can imagine to describe that very common experience. Thank you. Under what condition? Yeah. Okay, two perfect noticings. One, that your flow was way, way down. And you lost your place. It's actually difficult to keep a thought in mind when you're not being listened to. Isn't that surprising? Other reactions, please, to any part of this. Yes? <laughs> it's fun when they listen. It's a much more pleasant experience. Now, it can be funny when they're not listening, but it's not fun. You get me? It's like awkward and weird and off-putting and somebody else, please. Right. It, your very body orientation to each other becomes dramatically different in a condition of attention. Yes. You're like making yourself vulnerable and available at the same moment. Anybody else? How about in the really being listened to condition? Anything you noticed? Like a difference that was marked for you? Yes. No, that wasn't a hand up. OK. All right. Yes, please. You speak more rapidly? Yes. It's, it's that condition that we talked over here is flow. Yes. Because you feel like you can say more and they're actually going to listen. That's right. And because it feels like what you're saying matters, it's like stuff shows up that, that didn't under the other condition to say. Right? Very interesting. Thank you for your contributions. So here's what a lot of people have experienced across my many years of doing this kind of exercise with a whole lot of students around the world. The typical exercise results. In the former condition of being not listened to, we feel distracted. We lose our place. We have this sort of uh, brain fart experience, right, to put it impolitely. And that's contrasted with the, the very real sense of focus. We're concentrated. We're, we're laser pointed in terms of our capacity for thinking our way through and expressing those thoughts. In the former condition of non-listening, we have nothing to say. We run out of gas real fast. The good ideas just aren't coming and we sometimes lose our place. And that's contrasted with, I could have gone on forever. As long as I'm being listened to, there's no, there's no limit, there's no exhaustion. It's, it's easy. Low quality ideas when we're not being listened to contrasted with extraordinary creativity and clarity when we are being listened to. Of course, we could multiply these outcomes, but it's interesting and suggestive. So, generally speaking, when we enter into a situation, especially a social situation, we bring or generate a definition. If it's a commonplace experience, something that we've been in routinely, then we tend to bring a ready-made script to the moment that sort of predefines and establishes the meaning of the players and the activities that we're going to undertake. If it's something fresh that we haven't in bef been in before, with people that we haven't encountered before, then we might have to make stuff up on the fly but we still define the situation pretty rapidly. 
Is this clear? Now, one of the basic principles or understandings within my field in social interaction is the idea that we behave towards people and other objects of our awareness, but people is the most important. We behave towards people on the basis of the meanings that the people have for us. You follow? So if someone else means good friend, valuable comrade, uh, excellent good company, then the way that I treat them, the way that I'll interact with them, the way that I'll participate in our exchange will be consistent with that positive value that I, that I already have imposed on them mentally. We treat objects, people and other things, on the basis of the meanings that the objects have for us. You follow? Okay. What that shows is, when you enter into an interaction, if you don't make the person and the situation meaningful in a favorable way, you're likely to treat it as of little value, and them. And that has unfortunate consequences. If we make a decision, I'm going to bring good listening with me into this encounter. It sets a tone. It establishes a range of possibilities that far outstrips the opposite. And so it's not just the case that our own participation is given shape because we act as mirrors for each other and there's that norm of reciprocity, that expectation of matching that's pretty universal. When I bring good listening into an encounter, the person who I'm listening to has more and better things to say. My listening gets easier, so I listen even more intently, which in turn, in a cycle, reinforces the quality of what it is that they say next. And so it goes and builds and builds and builds and expands. So that there beco becomes effortless, effortless listening because the listening is so positively impacting what it is that the partner is saying. And in the give and take of everyday turn-taking in conversation, that can make magical things show up. It can also spread out across all of our encounters and the, throughout the entire social network that we're plugged into. Like you bring into a situation positive listening and you have a good exchange. And out of the juice of that, out of the energy of that, you enter into your next encounter. And carrying with you, so to speak, the perfume of having been immersed in this very positive experience, you go into the next one. And the vibe that you give off invites other people to do, and to do differently than they might have done and to experience differently than they could have. And it multiplies. It spreads. It becomes contagious. It's like the most beneficent infection. It propagates throughout the whole living system, the networks in which we're ensconced as human beings. Extraordinary. It can go all the way without limit in every direction. So through listening, we have the power to provide our partners with feedback that supports them in full self-expression. And because they respond in kind, we're likely to get back what we give. Suppose I was to open this dry erase marker and go, what shows up? Did anything appear or show up? Why? Right, but if I step over to the whiteboard and make the same gestures, in this case, my signature, my first name, Kurt, I show up because there's a surface to receive the gestures tracery. The residue of my movement, because there's a space for an effect to appear. The cause is effectual. The gestures produce an, uh, something that can be seen, that shows up in the world. I'm suggesting that, like the whiteboard example, when we listen, we provide a surface on which 
all kinds of things appear that can't appear without the listening. Authentic listening creates a surface upon which one's thoughts, creativity, and even oneself can appear. You can't show up unless somebody gives you space to show up. If they don't acknowledge your, your existence, much less your value, how can you make a difference? How can you manifest yourself? We need each other as partners, as mirrors, to show up in the world, especially to show up in the world and have any impact. Am I making sense to you all? So let's come to a conclusion. What, we might ask, are we missing if we fail to listen? If we don't support each other by listening with care and attention? Well, given the fact that listening shapes speech and how much other people's validation matters to us and how our lives are so enmeshed, so intertwined, it could be that we lose out on a very great deal indeed by not listening. Like everything that supports us in health and happiness and productivity. It's all dramatically reduced, if not disappeared altogether. So, in conclusion, we owe it to our partners and to ourselves to produce the quality of listening that will support each other in our mutual growth, our mutual well-being, our mutual productivity. And if we fail to do it, we're ripping other people off and ourselves in the process. We're undermining every good thing that we might could experience if we would just give care and attention. Thank you for your courteous attention. Okay, doctor, thank you. Thank you very much. I hope the listening exercise was beneficial. I'm sorry. I was going to shake your hand. <laughs> okay, I just dissed the professor. You didn't see it. Okay, hey, 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 give me a break. I'm. Uh, okay, um, could we move on, please? Okay. No, hey, seriously, how many times, how many times, we got about one minute, okay, because i got to get you to class so I don't get beat up by other professors, right? But how many times have you started talking to somebody, they pull out their phone and go, I'm listening. Well, they, yeah, really. Well, they probably, just think about this, think about that exercise, and really try over time, everything we're doing here, you're not going to walk out and it's going to have a 100% impact today or tomorrow. What we're doing here is a lifelong process with me, with, with the doctor, with, with all of you, with the dean, etc. So, doctor, on behalf of the, you know, the Gore cadets, the commandant staff, and our, our leadership and character development program, we thank you coming in last night and this morning and doing, doing this for us. So let's give him a hand. And a handshake. <laughs> okay. All right. With that, with that, I will let everyone know that commandant's time. 8.09, go.